What's up, friend? Welcome back to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. My name is Kelsey, and today we are down in my basement pantry, and we're gonna have a chat. Two months without the grocery store. Let's talk about it. So for the last two months, all of January and February, which ended up being about nine weeks, I've been participating in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge, where the whole idea is to spend less money at the grocery store, not really utilize the grocery store, utilize what you have stored in your home first. Um, the way Jessica works at though, the rules are really lax, and you make them up for yourself and what works for you and your family and your budget and all of the things. So the goals that I had set for myself and some of like rules boundaries um, was to mainly use what I have stored in my home. I have spent the last six, seven years building up this pantry, so it's pretty well stocked, but there are some areas I'm lacking in and that was dairy and some fresh produce. Um, I have my two small kiddos, Grant and Eleanor, and I did not feel good about taking their fresh, you know, raw dairy out of their diet for two months. And the same thing with fresh fruit. I, I just couldn't get on board with that. I could have made the challenge more challenging for myself if I wouldn't have done that, but that just wasn't gonna happen. I really wasn't like looking to go full apocalypse mode or anything during this challenge. Um, so I didn't really, you know, the challenge is what you make it. You make your own rules. That's what worked well for us. So that's what we did. But some of my other goals were to just be resourceful, make sure I'm not being wasteful. Things can very easily get forgotten about and pushed to the back in the fridge and freezer. So I always made sure to shop those areas first before I'd plan my meals out for the week, which I think I accomplished and I did really well on. Um, and then also to get creative, be resourceful. So substitute where needed, try and figure out other ways to use things um, and, and get creative. Use some of the items I don't typically grab for um, in new ways. And we found some things that we really enjoyed eating. Um, another thing I wanted to do was figure out a better game plan for my garden. A lot of what I have put up here in my pantry is from what I grow here on our homestead. So I wanted to see um, what were the things that I would grab, what are some things that are getting neglected, areas where I can pull back on in the garden and areas where I can beef up production. So we'll go over that here in a second. So I just want to have a better um, preservation plan in place this year. In years past, like I'd have a general idea of like how much I'd want to do in each category, but I would come in with all this produce from the garden. It would sit on my countertops and like you feel the pressure like, okay, I got to get this all taken care of really fast. And sometimes it just ended up like totally haphazard and I would just pull random recipes and not be very intentional about what I was doing with it. Like it will all get used. I'll make sure of that. But am I preserving it and making the best use of it for our family in the ways that we're actually going to want to eat it. I have a tendency to be like, oh, that recipe looks really good, let's try it. And then I do like a double batch of it and then I have cans sit on the shelf for a while just because it's not something we normally eat. It's just something that intrigued me that day. So I wanna be better about that, more intentional about my preservation plan. So let's take a quick overview of the pantry, shall we? I purposely left everything pushed back. So wherever you see spaces is where I used things. And we'll go over this in a little bit more detail and discuss what I am going to continue doing and what I am changing. Let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's talk about my tomato shelf here. I used, this wasn't here before, I used five quarts of tomato sauce, pint of tomato soup, pint of pizza sauce, um, a pint of plum sauce, two jars of the peach barbecue sauce, and then this is something we made this challenge. This is the barbecue sauce we made during the challenge. I didn't actually use any of that yet. A jar of my Victorian barbecue sauce, and this doesn't actually have 
tomatoes in it, but it's here, and that's my peach all mustard, and I used a jar of that. So keep in mind when I'm showing you how much we have used, I'm currently on the carnivore diet. I was on the carnivore diet the entire challenge. I will be on the carnivore diet for the foreseeable future, at least like 90% carnivore. Um, there are some food groups that for the foreseeable future, even past carnivore, I'm probably not going to be able to eat. I'm, I have a long journey ahead of me in healing my gut. One of those things is tomatoes. And right now, I'm mainly feeding my husband. I have my two small children, they're six and almost three, and they just don't consume a whole lot yet. I know that's coming. Um, so it's mainly my husband eating the majority of these things. So um, tomatoes is something I'm definitely going to be cutting back on. I had touched on that a bit in my garden plan a video I put back, I don't know how many weeks ago. I can link it on the screen and down below if you're interested. So I think I grew around 32 tomato plants last year and um, I am probably gonna do between 10 and 15 this year. Um, I could probably do even less than that, but I've got some things changing in my life. Um, I took on a ministry at church um, where I'm going to just be preparing food for people meals um, for people who are just in different seasons of need. We have a few expecting moms that um, are going to be on their postpartum journey very soon so I want to have some meals prepped for them and I also want to have food for people who are just in different seasons like grieving they have suffered a loss or um, you know a financial struggle those sort of things and it's within our church family I want to create that community there um, that's just something the Lord has laid on my heart so that's a new ministry I'm working on um, and I want to make sure I'm growing enough food and preserving things that I can use in those meals so I might be changing some of my numbers keeping that in mind but regardless I'm definitely dialing it back on the tomatoes okay the lighting back here Sorry about it, but that's what you get with old homes. Let's normalize old grungy basements. So we're on to some veggies here. This one, you guys are gonna roll your eyes at me. So you can't really see it, but here in this little section that's all empty, my canned carrots. I think I want to canned carrots again. Um, you guys are gonna roll your eyes at me because you know I've been harping on the fact that I just want to get them used up because we don't love them. However, in my journey to using them up, we found some ways that are just really great for it. My kids really enjoyed it in the fruit leathers. Great way to hide some veggies, get some more nutrients into them. They are good in baking. I just don't do a ton of baking with them. And I have to admit, it is nice to have them on the shelf just for convenience sake when I am in a pinch and I need a fast meal. It's very easy to throw together like a quick beef stew or some sort of soup and dump some carrots in it. So, I mean, this is what the challenge is all about to me, figuring out what we like and what helps me out. I'm all about convenience. Um, and I think I'm going to can some carrots, some pressure can some carrots this year. Not a whole lot, just a few to have them on the shelf. Um, I know we're not going to eat them a lot. We still don't like them on their own. So many of you have been like, just, you know, douse them in some butter and throw some honey and cinnamon on them or, you know, put them in this or that. And we just don't like them on their own. I don't even love them in a soup or a stew. Their flavor profile just totally changes during the pressure canning process. And if I had a choice, I'd much rather prepare my carrots from fresh for those sort of meals. So this is not going to be like a big project. It's just gonna be, you know, a couple of cans of carrots on the shelf. So that is something I learned and I was kind of surprised, but I'm admitting I was wrong and I do want some carrots on my canning shelf. On to green beans. So I did use a seven pints of green beans, but still have a lot left here. I have five pints and six quarts. Now the goal wasn't like to use everything. I don't see wisdom in that. I didn't want to have like this bare clean slate. I just wanted to use some things up, free up some jars for preservation this year and figure out what I need 
to do more or less of. So I am still going to be canning some green beans because I want that rotation of fresh goods going on the shelf. Some of these are like two years old, so I'm gonna continue working through them, but I want to be replacing them because we do use them, just not a whole lot. So I am gonna scale back on my green bean like I have like four or five different colored varieties that I grow I'm going to continue growing them just not so many because I'd rather use that space in the garden and on my pantry shelf for things that we eat more of I use two jars of my bread and butter pickles we still have mm, there's like 15 in there there's a lot of them um I actually gave some away as well so um, I'm still gonna grow cucumbers because occasionally we like them on a salad. My kids like them as garden snacks. And then whatever I have left over, I'll probably do one or two plants will get turned into pickles. So still going to do that, just not so many because we just don't eat that many pickles. And honestly, my husband said that he would eat them more if he'd just remember about them. I think that's half the problem. Sometimes we forget they're down here. Um, because he would just snack on them. So we just have to get better about that. Last thing on this shelf is my beets. I probably have 30 cans of either just plain pressure canned beets or some pickled sweet beets. We used three jars and um, I mean, we can only eat so many beets. My kids do like them and so does my husband, but right now I'm not eating them. So I don't think I am going to dedicate as big of a space in the garden this year to beets. Um, I do like to roast some beets in the summer months. Um, and I want to try making a beet kvass. I think that's how you say it. It's K-V-A-S-S. -S. It's a drink. Um, and I might try fermenting some as well. So I want to continue growing them. And, you know, we like them on salad sometimes too. And also our red beet eggs here in PA Dutch country. So I definitely will continue to grow them. But again, that is just something I've got a lot of and we can't eat that much of it. So it's getting dialed back in the garden. So let's work on this shelf here. This is pretty much like my peppers and some tomato products. I have salsas here as well. So I used one, two, three, four, five, six jars of salsa. Um, we like all of them. This was peach salsa, some cherry tomato and corn salsa, some um, tomato and jalapeno salsa, peach salsa, and this is the choice salsa from the National Center for Home Food Preservation, where you can kind of like pick and choose what goes in it. I don't like how this turned out. I'm not going to do this one again for sure. I still have a couple cans of it, but we'll work our way through it. I don't need to do a whole lot of salsa next year. I might do one or two different varieties. Um, we like them um, obviously with just chips, but um, in chili, um, tacos, enchiladas, stuff like that. Um, it's also good as like a marinade with just some chicken. I mean, there's lots of ways that you can use it, but um, I don't need to make a whole lot this coming year. Uh, I have some cowboy candy syrup here. I did use one jar of this. I like to use it as a marinade. It's just the leftovers from canning cowboy candy and it makes a good marinade. I still have six jars of that though, so I don't really need more of that. Um, peppers in general. Um, we just don't eat a whole lot of, not that we don't like them, they're just not a very large part of our diet. And I have just been growing more than what we can consume or want to consume. But I'll let you into my brain for a moment. Um, and, and how I think of this pantry. So, um, this is just our, the way we eat. It's part of the lifestyle that we live. Um, this isn't just for preparedness, although it is for preparedness. I believe in being prepared for whatever that reason may be, whether it's a job loss or sickness, just financial struggle, um, world events or weather. You just never know. Um, and I like to be prepared. And for some reason in my brain, I think that if we were without the grocery store for a long, you know, prolonged period of time and we didn't have access to things that we need variety. Um, and maybe there's some truth to that, but 
I sometimes let that thought get the better of me and don't make good use of the space or the time or the resources that I have because of that thinking. Um, we don't eat a lot of peppers. So Kelsey, you don't have to grow so many peppers and preserve them in all these different ways because we just don't eat them. So regardless of what events happen, I don't think we need all these peppers. So yeah. So on to some fruit products and all of my jams and jellies. I did make a decent dent in here. Um, I used two cans of my cherry pie filling, one jar of the strawberries in syrup, two jars of the mock pineapple. I did one jar of strawberry syrup, jar of blueberry jam, some measle mint plum jam. I did, I think this was three jars of strawberry raspberry jam. And I did one, two, three jars of the strawberry apple jam, one jar of mock honey, and one jar of the, oh goodness, what is that? Zucchini bread jam. So I made a pretty good dent there. Um, I'm just finding there are certain jams or jellies that we just really enjoy, so I just need to focus on them. We love our raspberry and our strawberry things. Grape, oh, I had some grape jam here somewhere too that we really liked. Um, we like peach and we like blueberry, and those are just the things I need to stick to because that's what we're going to eat the most of. Um, I didn't get to try any of the blueberry syrup yet. Um, we didn't try any of the sundae in a jar either. So, um, let's look down here really quick and then I'll summarize my fruit thoughts. I used two quarts of the peaches here. I was trying to pace myself on these because I won't can any more of these until probably like August or September. Um, so I didn't want to go through them too fast and there's only like eight jars left. And then I've got some apple pie filling. I used one jar of that. I used four jars of my apple butter and I used, I think, 11 jars of applesauce. And again, like, I'm not trying to go through this stuff too quickly because I'm not going to get apples again until like October-ish. Um, so I want to make sure to pace myself that, you know, this lasts us for a good long while yet. So fruit is definitely an area I am lacking on. Um, I need to show you down here with my freeze dried fruit as well. We went through a lot of it. I was trying not to buy too much fresh at the store and use what we had while also pacing what we had because I wanted it to last here until I have a chance to preserve it. Again, so fruit is an area we seriously lack here in our home, so there's only so much we can do with a quarter acre. Um, there are some ways we could make more space, but it would be a huge undertaking, so it's a discussion for another day. But with what we have, I do produce a whole lot of raspberries and quite a bit of strawberries. Um, but I plan on upping strawberry production again this year because those are two big things that my kids love are raspberries and strawberries. Um, I don't quite grow enough strawberries for our fresh eating needs. My kids will literally sit out in the garden in the strawberry beds and just eat themselves round full, which I love for them. Wonderful core memory. Um, I don't grow enough for that. And then just eating them throughout the week and then also preserving them. So I really want to up my fruit preservation this year, uh, regardless of where it comes from. I need to source from local farms and just get in a whole bunch of fruit this year and preserve it through mainly canning and freeze drying. I'm thinking more freeze drying than canning. My kids seem to like that a bit more than the canned fruit. Um, but I want to have both those methods and I really want to focus this year, regardless of what we are preserving, on those two methods, um, on freeze drying and on canning, just because it is shelf stable. Um, that just gives me peace of mind, regardless if we have power or not, our food is not going to spoil. 
Down here, this is the last bit on the canning shelf. This is the pork broth that we canned together. So that did not get used. Um, I did use a jar of venison. I had just pulled it forward. You can see there's a gap right there. Um, so I used one jar of that. I used two jars of my canned beef. I found some more tomato sauce down here. Another five jars. So we've got plenty of tomato sauce. Um, I did use one can of uh, chicken here, but I think I pulled that up from the bottom here. It's some underneath the shelf. And I actually used like eight jars of my canned potatoes, but that was another canning project we did. So some of those got restocked. So let's sum up that shelf. Potatoes will forever be canned and on my pantry shelf. I use them in so many different ways, um, as well as just potatoes fresh on my pantry sh shelf, um, freeze-dried and in the freezer. I keep them all sorts of different ways for different purposes. Um, that is something I'm devoting a ton of space this year to is potatoes and root veggies in general. I'm going to do a lot more carrots, some parsnips, some turnips, um, maybe some rutabaga, and some beets. Not a whole lot of those, but we eat a lot of root veggies. So that's where a huge portion of my garden is going to that and to fruit production. So some other things I learned during this challenge. You all know I've got my health things. I feel like a broken record with that, so sorry, but it's just reality. Got health things going on, but on top of that, I was super sick for a long time, like nearly an entire month, and then I got a little bit better, and then I got worse again, and I got re-sick with something else for like another two weeks. I was sick for like six weeks, and it was, I was on the struggle bus, to be honest. Not gonna lie, it was a really difficult time. Uh, super stressful and it would have been so nice to have more convenience meals on my shelf and that's just one of those things where it's like sometimes you just don't know what's gonna happen and it's completely out of your control and that's why I like being prepared and I honestly was not prepared enough for that situation so I want more ready-to-go meal in a jar um, meals on my pantry shelf I want more ready to go components to make a good meal and not just beef stew. Um, that's an easy one to throw together, but I want more variety than beef stew. Um, so things that are just like dump in a pot, heat and go. I want a lot more freezer meals in my freezers. Um, and with that ministry I talked about, I'm gonna be doing a ton of freezer meals and I figured why not just double up on them. Um, and have them ready to go because you know sometimes it's just things get busy and the day gets away from me and it's like oh I gotta start on dinner and it'd be so nice to just pull it out and go. That was just a really big takeaway for myself just my own personal circumstances during this challenge. Convenience meals and just things that make life easier are so so valuable and I want more of them. So let's turn our attention to some um, stored veggies. So I, I still have one box of potatoes upstairs that I'm working through that are still pretty good. Um, I have this whole box down here um, that are growing all of these eyes. Now, I mean, they're still perfectly edible, just remove these. Um, they're just ever so slightly squishy, but not too bad. So my plan is, I am probably gonna go through these, remove all of these sprouts. I'm usually really good about this. It prolongs their shelf life if you remove them as quickly as possible. But with being sick so much, you know, things just, things got overlooked a lot. So I've got this big old box here that I need to go through. I'm probably going to be freeze drying some mashed potatoes for some instant mashed. Um, and I might be canning some more as well. I might also dehydrate some not dehydrate, um, freeze dry some slices for things like scallop potatoes, have those ready to go. But this box needs to get worked through. It's still savable. The ones behind me though are not. To be completely honest, this whole cart here got moved behind this curtain. My husband has stuff behind this curtain and totally forgotten about. So these guys, I don't even know if I can get, I mean, <laughs> yeah that's like a foot long. 
Um, you, I mean, don't throw these out. You can totally plant these. So that's my plan for these. These are just gonna go into the ground. In about another month, they should still survive another month down here. Just be careful not to break them off. And then when I plant these, I plant them like this. I don't try and dig a hole deep enough for this thing. I will just lay it horizontally underneath the ground. I'll dig a trench, like a four inch trench and lay this down and we'll get some more purple potatoes um like super late spring early summer so i've got quite a few of those back here so it's not like a total loss but we're not going to get to eat those but we'll get to eat some that grow from them i did not use any of my butternut squash or this little cheese pumpkin here or the acorn squash i actually focused my attention on my rompicante squash so here's what's left of my rampicante squash. I did use four of them and I used two of my Georgia candy roasters. I only have one of those left here. So I made a dent, but there's still quite a bit more to use up. This is probably just going to get um, roasted and then pureed and freeze dried. So the rampicante squash, let's talk about those for a minute. Um, showstopper in the garden. They look beautiful growing over a trellis, super prolific. They produced so, so much from one plant. I got 15 of them. Very healthy plant as well compared to a lot of the other squash I've grown in my area. However, um, some negatives that I have found. We don't love the flavor. It is very, very mild, almost somewhat bland. It's very watery as well and super stringy. I was surprised. Um, I mean, not so stringy like a spaghetti squash, but I'd say like a between a spaghetti squash and an acorn squash. Still pretty stringy. Even after I pureed them, there are still lots of like stringy bits. So we didn't love them for like their flavor and texture. There are other squash that I love far more than that for flavor and texture. So it's kind of like a, a toss up because I know they perform well and I'll get something because any other squash I have grown or pumpkin have been like super hit or miss whether I get anything off of the vines at all. But I don't want to grow something just because it produces well. I want to grow something because we love it. So I'm just going to focus on my Georgia candy roasters because I love them. We love butternut squash. We love um, the cheese pumpkin. So those are things I am going to focus on this year. And sadly, we're saying goodbye to the rompicante. I did use quite a few cans up here, like my store-bought cans. I used some artichoke hearts, some kidney beans, different beans here, some refried beans, some canned pumpkin. Um, I did use a whole bunch of tomato paste. I used some of the marinara sauce up here, some more tomato products. Um, I was trying to be good about going through and looking at expiration dates. So that's why some of this stuff got prioritized as well. Some pineapples, some oranges, cranberry sauce, some corn and peas, and some um, baked beans. So the canned good section. Um, that kind of all started when I first started on my canning journey and I just kind of kept with it because I, I wanted to establish a pantry quickly. And that's how that all happened. Um, there are some things I'll continue to buy probably because I just only have so much time on my hands. So things like tomato paste, I will always buy that. Um, I will probably always buy, you know, like diced tomatoes. Um, anytime I've tried to can any sort of tomato where I want to like keep its shape, it just turns to mush anyway. So I don't love them. We're going to keep buying them. Um, things like refried beans, artichoke hearts, and then things like mandarin oranges, um, and maybe baked beans. I might try to can some baked beans and like, it's not a whole lot of work to can beans, um, dry beans, but it's just another thing for me to do. So I was just trying to take some of the pressure off of myself, but then things got kind of carried away and now I've got a lot that I need to use up. I know they'll be fine past their best buy or expired date, but um, I just want to be more intentional about where I'm putting my resources. Um, and like there are just some things I'm realizing we just don't really eat a whole lot of. 
Okay, this whole shelf here is some like convenience and snacky type items on the top. And then I've got like all of my different sweeteners here and then I have all my freeze dried stuff on the bottom. So this was like completely packed at the beginning of the challenge. We've eaten through a lot of things. Um, I keep like some mac and cheese on hand. Um, and we went through a few boxes of that. Some like chips and crackers I do keep on hand. Um, some different mixes, extra pastas, um, some sauces, stuff like that. So we did go through those things. Um, that's just some areas where like I give myself grace. Like you know me, I am pretty crunchy on some things. I try to do organic when possible. No processed foods, no additives, no chemicals. We don't do fragrances here. Like none of this stuff. We live a pretty non-toxic lifestyle. I've removed all toxins from our home. However, um, I think it's equally as toxic when you stress yourself out about that. And I was trying to do too much on my own. Um, and I just decided, you know, enough's enough and I'm just going to allow myself some convenience items. So crackers and chips, um, and like my mac and cheese, um, Sometimes I'll other, have other like snack type items for my kids, some bars from the store, just to take some of the pressure off of myself. So it's super nice to have some of those things on the shelf. And we're gonna be stocking up on some of those soon. We're gonna do a grocery run together. And then here on my sweetener shelf, I've got some brown sugar, some maple sugar. I do have cocoa powder here and I got like sweetened condensed milk and um, some evaporated milk, I've got my maple syrup, my honey, and then I have coconut sugar and vanilla over here. The coconut sugar was actually something that I purchased through, I think it was right in the beginning of the pantry challenge. I saw it at one of the Amish stores and that's where I go to get my raw milk. And coconut sugar is not cheap and per pound it was 99 cents at the Amish store. So I grabbed 15 of them. Um, and it actually didn't push me over budget that week, which was nice. So I did stock up on those. Um, I calculated pretty well how much we were going to need with all of my sweeteners. I try to always keep 10 to 12 of these, um, I think it's 30, yeah, it's a liter, um, maple syrup on hand, 10 to 12 of them. Um, that usually lasts us about five to six months. Um, and then I try and keep quite a bit on, of honey on hand as well. And then I do have a big, I didn't get down here to show you guys these yet, a big five gallon bucket of raw organic cane sugar as well. So we still have plenty of that left, although I am going to restock the shelves when we go to the store. Um, I like when they stay as full as possible. So down on these last three shelves is where I keep most of my freeze-dried foods. Um, the stuff that's in the Mylar bags, I consider a little bit more long-term because I usually have um, the oxygen absorber in there and then I heat seal them as well. So mainly the stuff I had pulled from was in jars and m most all of them are gone now because we ate through them all. Um, there's some cantaloupe left. There's a jar of raspberries left. There's some peppers here and some, I think it's goat milk. Um, there's some, uh, uh, what is this? Freeze dried broth, some celery leaves and some peppers here. Um, but everything else we ate through, we ate through all of my jarred strawberries and most of the raspberries, all of the peaches, some of the peppers, some of the green beans. Um, so, we did make a pretty good dent in that. We went through four packs of coffee, still have plenty of that left. Um, but again, I want to up my fruit production for sure in the freeze dried section. The last things in this area I'm gonna talk about is my five gallon buckets of dry goods down here. The only things I really touched was the salt and the flour. I had two five gallon buckets of whole wheat flour. I did make my way through one of them. So one of them is gone. I still have one left. 
and I used quite a bit of salt, um, but I still have, I think I have a 25 pound bag in there and I have another 25 pound bag behind it. I like to keep lots of salt on hand. So um, I didn't make too much headway through these things, but I mean, there's, there's only so much that we can eat. Um, and because I'm not eating any gluten right now, it takes a bit longer to go through things. So um, I need to keep working through my whole wheat flour. I'm going to keep doing half and half. So I am going to stock back up on all purpose flour at the store because we just don't love the flavor of the whole wheat on its own. So we're going to keep doing half and half there. And then once I work through that, I'm not buying any more of the whole wheat flour. I'm going to move on to start uh, using my wheat berries that I have stored. We are over here at the pork and chicken freezer. I have something in there that I need to throw into the freeze dryer. Um, you can see how much we used here of the pork. Used quite a bit of that. And then this entire door was filled with either chicken breast or chicken thighs. So that all pretty much got used. That was from our earlier round of birds in the spring. And then everything up here is from our second round of birds. I also used four whole chickens this challenge. So we're still pretty well stocked. Here is the beef freezer. We're down to our last two steaks. We only ate two this challenge. Um, I did use a whole lot of ground beef. Um, I think I used about 20 pounds or so. I did just stock up, so this freezer looks fuller than it should. Um, I just purchased another 40 pounds of ground beef, but that's underneath this box. And I purchased seven roasts. So I used three roasts this challenge, um, but that's all I really used from this freezer was about 20 pounds of ground beef and three of my roasts. Here is the upstairs upright freezer that just has mostly fruits and veggies, but there's also some venison and pork in here. I did make a good dent in the venison. This was all full. So I probably used about 10 pounds or so of that. Um, I did make my way through two of the big, I had, uh, where are they here? Two of the big gallon bags of raspberries. Two of those are gone and about half of this one is gone. I went through some frozen strawberries and blueberries, whole bunch of sausage um, that we went through. I did use up one of my bags of tallow that we used on the salve and um, the tallow bomb that we made. So um, a good portion of things got used up in this freezer. I went through three bags of my shredded zucchini. I know I'm missing a whole bunch of things, just can't quite remember, but this was like stock to the brim. So we did make a good dent in here. And then on this side, I used up a little bit of, um, I had some pear and caramel sauce in here. I had some rhubarb in sauce, some different cheeses. Um, I used up some of my canned pesto and the roasted pepper pizza sauce more cheeses over there, um, some chili starter mix, and I think I used a thing of beet puree here. Um, I put that into some smoothies and also into some crackers. So besides just a few items here in like my kitchen pantry, like I pulled from rice up here and like sprouted oats, my seasoning, some baking items are up here. The only two things I actually ran out of and it was right towards the end was some butter and some all-purpose flour. Um, which was okay, I had other things I could use to substitute there, but I will be restocking those things here shortly. So all in all, I am really pleased with how it went and what I learned um, just gave me some more um, clarity and where I just need to focus. So like I said, I am being intentional about the space that I have out in the garden, what I'm planting in it. So we're upping a lot of the root veggie production as well as as much fruit as I can grow out there. And I just want to be preserving more fruit in general. And then the other thing that I want to be doing is using my freeze dryer more for dairy. Um, butter and heavy cream are not going to work. Their fat content is just too high. Um, I do want to stock up on some butter and keep it in my freezer. 
but I am thinking with milk um, I want to be purchasing like an extra half gallon to a gallon each week as long as budget allows and freeze drying that and then having you know a good store of it here so that's what I'm gonna work on there um, I want to up all of my ready-made meals whether that be in a jar or freeze-dried or in the freezer so we're working on those together okay so with all that said to wrap this up for you guys um, moving forward now um, what I am aiming for is just a super productive year productive in the garden productive like for myself inside and figuring out ways to make that go as smoothly as possible without causing myself undue stress so i want to be intentional about what i'm growing in the space i have intentional about what i'm preserving and how i am preserving it sorry if you hear knocking over there's the bunnies um but I, I'm very excited and hopeful for this year. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along for this challenge. I, hopefully it was inspiring to you and just enjoyable to come along. Um, but lots of good stuff happening this year. I'm so excited to get out in the garden. I have to give you guys an update soon on my seedlings and how everything is going. To be honest, I'm way behind because life. Um, but I'm so excited to get outside, get my hands in the dirt, get some vitamin D. I'm so craving sunlight. I'm sure anyone who doesn't live in a sunny area feels that too. It's been like months of what looks like doom and gloom outside. Um, but there's a season for everything. Um, I am quite honestly ready for this season to be over now. I just want to get outside. I know my kiddos are stir crazy too. So lots to look forward to in the future. But thank you all so much for coming along with me and hanging out. Um, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Let me know. I'd love to know if you participated in this challenge. What did you learn? I'm sure I can learn lots from your experience as well. I just like to hear other people's takes on things because we all see things differently and can always learn from each other. So go ahead and drop down what you gathered from this whole experience down in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and share, subscribe. All your comments help this video get out to more people, help my channel and in turn help my family so much. We appreciate you. Thank you for hanging out with me. You all have a blessed week and I will see you next time.